Hey there and welcome over here to this new extreme grocery budget challenge. I've made a few of these videos on my channel previously and I've gotten requests to do another one so that's what we're doing today and this is actually my favorite one yet. What we're going to do is we're going to head over to Walmart. We're going to spend only $25. We're going to see how many products we could buy with only $25. $25 is not a lot of money but you could actually create a lot of delicious homemade meals with it. I am going to be only using oil, salt, pepper, and some seasonings from my own kitchen. We are going to be making a lot of meals. All of these meals will be delicious though. I'm not going to be showing you meals that just aren't tasty because nobody wants to eat yucky food. But anyways, I hope you enjoy this video and if you are new here, I'd love to have you. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video, but let's go ahead to Walmart. While I was shopping at Walmart, I did want to show you a few of the things that we picked up. And then also, my daughter Brinley was being really funny, so I just wanted to show you a couple clips of her. We just got back home from Walmart and here's everything that we picked up. I'm going to go over everything with you here in a second, but I do want to um, show you something really quickly. So while I was at Walmart, um, they didn't have any eggs. So eggs was on my shopping list. It's always on my shopping list. And they didn't have any eggs at all. Like they didn't have any of the organic ones. They didn't have any brown eggs. They literally had two cracked eggs left in the whole egg area. So they were sold out of eggs. So needless to say, we had to go next door to a Kroger type of store and they did have eggs there and they were also on sale for a dollar a dozen so that was actually a wonderful price so I just picked that up and then another thing is Walmart didn't have the three pound bag of chicken that I was hoping to get so again at the Kroger store I picked this up this is actually a pretty expensive brand of frozen boneless skinless chicken breast but thankfully it was on sale this week that was good so I picked that up and that up from the Kroger Kroger store. Everything else is from Walmart. The first thing I got is this pork chorizo. If you don't know yet, I am from New Mexico. Well, I guess I wasn't born in New Mexico, but pretty much raised in New Mexico. And um, a lot of people cook with this here in New Mexico. People cook like Mexican food with it and all that type of stuff. So I picked this up and it's such a low cost for this. This is about nine ounces and it's especially good with breakfast types of foods. That's my favorite way of eating this. And then over here, baby carrots. A little bit disappointed in my Walmart once again because they didn't have the cheaper version of the large carrots. Um, just like the big carrots. They only had these baby carrots, which was okay because these were still a pretty good price, but the larger, bigger carrots are typically cheaper. And then again, another thing that I was kind of upset about is cheese. They didn't have the great value cheese. Like, they were seriously all sold out of cheese at the Walmart. They only had the more expensive craft cheese, but again, that's okay. I spent, I spent quite a bit more on this, but... We wanted cheese with our food this week and we love cheese so I picked that up. And now I have some garlic. I bought, I bought a bulb of garlic, one Roma tomato. My daughter actually um, picked this up off the shelf and threw it on the ground. So that's why I picked that up because I wasn't going to go put that back on the shelf after my daughter threw it on the ground. So I will give that a really good scrub-a-dub-dub -dub and we will use it. Anyways, next I got this chicken stuffing mix. This is very inexpensive. Over here, tomato sauce. This is another thing that's around, I think, 30 cents. And it adds great flavor to foods. And for eight ounces, you really can't go wrong with that. We got some petite diced tomatoes, grits. You've seen me cook with grits before, but I got another package of these just because it is very inexpensive. Once again, we're trying to, you know, cook for a low cost. I especially like the great value brand of grits because they're lower cost, but they only had the Quaker. Anyways, I got one sweet potato uh, onion because onion adds great flavor. Bell pepper. These bell peppers were on sale. Typically, I could find green bell peppers cheaper than any other color of bell peppers, so that's why I picked this one up. Some bouillon cubes. This is a pretty inexpensive container of bouillon cubes. This is 25 cubes. I'm definitely not going to use all of these 
bouillon cubes for just the recipes that I'm going to be making, but I am glad that I have so many bouillon cubes because I'll use them for different recipes. A can of cream of chicken, a box of one pound of small shell pasta noodles, brown rice. We love cooking with brown rice in our home just because low cost, very healthy, and it's just good. A pound of black beans for a soup, a pound of pinto beans because pinto beans are my husband's favorite food. Anyways, here's everything. Now let's get to cooking. Of course, we have to start with breakfast first, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and start with. We're gonna be making a chorizo breakfast casserole. So to begin, in my saucepan, I have olive oil in there, about a tablespoon of that. And then I added a quarter of our onion that we bought from the store and I just stirred this all together. Now you're gonna to wanna to add in your chorizo. This is the chorizo we got from the store, of course. And you're going to want to cook this completely through. You know it's cooked when it's about 160 degrees or higher. I wanted this to be a pretty big and good hearty meal, so I am using all 12 of the eggs that we got, so I just cracked them into this bowl. With the block of sharp cheddar cheese that we got, I did cube it into four different squares just because I do tend to use a lot of cheese on things and I didn't want to use too much cheese because I did want to save the cheese for four different recipes, so that is why I cubed it up. Anyways, the only seasonings I added to this casserole was salt and pepper. Of course, you could add some onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, anything like that would be delicious. Then I added a block of our sharp cheddar cheese that I shredded up. I also added a half a cup of water. Adding water into eggs is a great substitute if you don't have any milk on hand. Next, I added our cooked through chorizo, gave this a stir, and it is ready for the oven. This is just gonna go into a greased nine by 13 baking dish and this is gonna bake in the oven on 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or until the center is no longer jiggly. And here it is out of the oven. Making breakfast casseroles like this is a really great idea if you're trying to have a big filling breakfast and save a ton of money. So just keep that in mind if you are on a low budget or anything of that nature. Big breakfast casseroles are great and hearty. Now we're making a stuffing bake. I have made a recipe similar to this on my channel before, but this is a really, really flavorful recipe, so I really suggest it. Anyways, to my nine by 13 baking dish, I laid out three of our chicken breasts. I salted and peppered them on each side. Of course, use more or less chicken depending on your size of family. And now I'm just adding a can of cream of chicken soup on top. You could add any type of cream of soup you prefer. I know a lot of people don't care for cream of soups, so you can make your own cream of soup or anything like that. And then right on top of this, you're going to be adding some of your sharp cheddar cheese. This cheese is going to give it some great cheesiness and great flavor. This is such a budget-friendly dinner idea. Now you're going to be adding your box of stuffing mix. And if you don't want your stuffing so dry, you could add a half a cup of some chicken broth on top of this. This is going to bake in the oven on 350 degrees, covered with aluminum foil for 20 minutes. Then take the foil off and bake it for an additional 20 minutes. Here's what it looks like out of the oven. This really did come out great. If you do have a larger family, this recipe is exceptionally great for big families because you could just throw a bunch of chicken in there and you are good to go. Now we're making this black bean soup. Don't knock it until you try it. It's really good. And I love making soups like this with black beans because they are so nutritious and healthy. Beans are just one of those things that are very inexpensive, but they will leave you full and they're really great. Anyways, so I have my black beans that I drained and rinsed, picked out all the bad beans, and then I let them sit overnight in this bowl of water. And here we are the next day. I'm just chopping up half of our bag of carrots we got from the store, along with half of our bell pepper, and then some more of our onion. Over to my Dutch oven, I have about a tablespoon of some olive oil in there. I just added our veggies in and I'm going to cook these veggies until they begin to brown and soften up for about 10 minutes. To make our broth, I'm going to be adding four of these cubes to eight cups of water. 
Just a little side note, always buy bouillon cubes or better than bouillon, something like that because buying your own chicken broth in the store is pretty expensive so I always just either buy bouillon cubes or better than bouillon. Now that our veggies are soft, I did add in a little bit of minced garlic and I'm going to stir this around for 20 seconds. And now here are our black beans. I did drain them and rinse them one last time. I just added them to our Dutch oven along with our eight to nine cups of chicken broth. The only seasonings I did use for this was just some salt and pepper. Of course, you could add more seasonings. You could add a bay leaf. That would make it extra delicious, but I did want to stay true to you guys and, you know, just stick with what I was trying to do, make very budget-friendly meals. So I brought this up to a boil and then I did let this simmer on my stove with the lid on for about two to three and a half hours. That does seem like a long time, but you want these beans to completely cook through and you want all those flavors to merge together. But here is what it looks like all cooked up. You could use an immersion blender and blend everything so it's very smooth and creamy together. I didn't want to do that. I just kept it like this, but this is a great inexpensive soup that will feed a ton of people. Now we're making a chicken noodle soup. Believe it or not, chicken noodle soup is very inexpensive to make and it's very hearty. So I boiled up two of our chicken breasts just on the stove. You could also use a pressure cooker, anything like that. Just boil up your chicken and then I'm slicing it into cubes. We wanted our chicken into cubes, but you could easily shred it if you prefer it shredded. And then I diced up some more of our onion and the remainder of our carrots that we had left. Over to my Dutch oven, I just added our veggies in there and you could also add some celery in, but I didn't wanna spend more money on celery just because carrots are a little bit more nutritious and like I said, I didn't wanna spend more money on celery. I just didn't think it was necessary. And then once our carrots were getting soft, I added our chicken in and now you're gonna add your seasonings. I just added cracked pepper and salt. If you want to make this extra flavorful, go ahead and add in a teaspoon of thyme and one bay leaf. You could also add in a half of a lemon. That would make it really, really good. But like I said before, we are making very budget-friendly meals, so I didn't add that in. And then I added in our six cups of chicken broth. I gave this a stir. And now I'm adding in my two cups of small shell pasta noodles once I brought this up to a boil. And you're gonna cook this until the pasta noodles are completely cooked through. Here is my chicken noodle soup. This came out amazing. It's crazy to me how you could buy such cheap ingredients but still make delicious meals. Now we're making a tomato pinto bean casserole. This one is also amazing. So we're gonna just start out by cooking up our pound of pinto beans. I just followed the right directions on the back of the bag or you could use an instant pot pressure cooker. I just made sure I rinsed my pinto beans really well because pinto beans tend to have some dirt on them and I also picked out the bad beans. But anyways, now we're gonna cook up a cup of our brown rice. I also followed the directions on the back of the bag. And then I also added in a couple of these bouillon cubes to give this some extra flavor. I do want to mention to you, all of these meals are going to make you feel pretty good after you eat them. Just remember, we're only spending about $20 on all of this food. You could easily buy like a burger somewhere for $20, so keep that in mind. Very low cost and these meals are pretty good. So over to my saucepan, I added the other half of our bell pepper along with some more of our onion and I sauteed these up together. Once they were nice and brown, how I wanted them to be, my kitchen was also smelling really good at that point. I love the way bell pepper smells. I added in our brown rice that we cooked along with our can of tomatoes and our can of tomato sauce. Then I added in our pinto beans that we cooked up. I made sure to salt and pepper this casserole, then I brought it over to my 9x13 baking dish, and then I covered it with some more of our cheese that we got from the store. I just shredded it up myself. I do want to let you know, you could add more cheese to this. You could also 
bulk up this casserole if you want to. You can make it however you want to. Adding some cumin to this recipe would make it extra flavorful. But I just put it in my oven on 350 degrees for about 25 to 35 minutes or until it looked the way I wanted it to be. I just wanted that cheese nice and bubbly and crisp on top. But this came out really good. It will feed a ton of people and pinto beans are just absolutely so healthy for your body. At this point, I had some things left over, so I thought, oh shucks, what should I do with them? But I came up with the sweet potato macaroni and cheese and it came out good. So with my sweet potato, I'm just piercing it with a knife, just putting some holes in it, and then I'm gonna stick it in the microwave to soften it for a few minutes. Like I said before, I was kind of just using up whatever I had left on hand. So I just used the rest of our pasta shells. It was about eight ounces left. I just boiled that up on the stove and then I had two chicken breasts left. So I just put those on a frying pan on the stove and cooked them in some oil, salt, and pepper. And I let that reach the internal temperature of 165 degrees. Now that our sweet potato was completely steamed in the microwave, I'm just mashing it up with a potato masher so it is smooth. I also removed the skin off of the sweet potato. Now I'm adding in a little bit of some milk. You could also add in butter, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, any type of seasonings you want. And then I added in our cheese that I shredded up. This was just whatever was left over with the cheese. I do also want to mention you could do this in an immersion blender or a regular blender blender to make it completely smooth. I just didn't have time for that so I just didn't do it. I just continued to add more milk in and kept mashing it up until it was the consistency that I wanted. I drained our pasta shells and then brought them back over to the same pot and now I'm adding in our sweet potato mixture to this and you're just going to stir it all to combine. With the chicken that we cooked up on the stove, I just diced it into cubes and then I added it in. Once again, you're just going to stir all this together. I just popped this into a 9 by 13 baking dish and I baked this in the oven on 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. I just wanted that cheese to melt down and so everything got nice and creamy. Here it is out of the oven. This came out really good. Of course, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I think it needed some more flavor. So go ahead and add some diced up onion, garlic, some more seasonings to this, but for being on the fly and being such a cheap meal, I think it was really good. For our large container of grits, this gives you 18 servings, which is a huge amount of food. You're probably wondering what I was gonna do with it. I was gonna make a huge casserole out of it, delicious. I've made it before, but I actually ran out of ing ingredients, unfortunately, so I just ate this plain. My whole family ate it plain. We all thought it was good. I just put some water in it and cooked it in the microwave for a couple minutes. We like our grits a little bit more dry in our home, but you know, you could eat your grits however you want to. They're super good with some butter on top. And that is a wrap of this extreme grocery budget challenge. I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, I've done a lot of other videos like this on my channel, so I will leave a link to all those videos in my description box below if you wanna check them out. And as always, we would love to have you, so go ahead and subscribe down below the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.